Hey everybody, Kitty2 TFJ. I'm going to be doing a video on my first DMR radio from Bao Fang. Um, the reason why I got this is because so far the reviews are very good. Um, I haven't even seen any bad reviews about this. Um, there might be a little bit of um, some programming that might be a little bit different than um, some other DMR radios, but so far I have seen a lot of good reviews on this one. This is a 1701. Um, I just got this today, so I'm going to be opening it here for the first time with you. I'm going to show you what's in the box, um, and I'm also going to show a little bit of how um, you turn it on, how it's set up, and how it looks um, with the screen and everything, and some of the UI that it comes with. Um, everybody knows that I um, have my um, analog radio. This is a, a UV82 radio that I've been using as my daily drivers really good um, and so I'm going to show you the differences between this radio and a DMR radio from Balfang um, so what we're going to do is the first thing you're going to see here it comes with a user manual and from what I've been seeing online is that it actually does have a good manual in English it's not in Japanese I mean Chinese um, so it's pretty good starting off with a manual it comes with the unit here and a very powerful battery um, it's let me see this is a 7.4 volt at um, 2200 milliamp hours so this is pretty good so I want to Going further, what we got here, we have an acoustic microphone that they seem to always come with. Um, this rubber ducky is the older rubber ducky. If I'm correct, they haven't... Yeah, this is the older rubber ducky, that uh, the antenna that it comes with. Um, this is the same one that comes with um, the UV um, 5Rs. And... Um, so far, these are not really all that great, so I would uh, recommend getting a different rubber ducky. Um, the Nagoya is good. You got the wrist strap that it um, all Balfane seem to come with. Programming cable. Charging base dock. And your wall AC adapter. Oh, wait. And then we also, of course, have your belt clip that it also comes with. So let's get this all out. So I'm sure that it has a charge. So I'm going to put these things aside. I'm going to keep the stuff that's essential right next to me. This radio feels very good in the hand. That's one thing that I had to say when it comes to the UV82 and um, any of the newer radios that Baofeng is coming out with. They really are redeeming themselves from the earlier models of radios that they had. Um, this, the 82, the UV82 is a very good radio. It's very solid. You can drop it and it, it really feels like you can drop this radio and not really mess it up for the first few times falls. Um, the speaker is bigger, the microphone is better, um, better than a UV5Rs, which is a very smaller radio, it's a compact, a more compact radio. Um, those are good for, I guess, emergency situations and getting yourself into the, the, um, the hobby when you want, you know, the UV5Rs. But if you want to get those, you might as well try to get yourself um, the 82, which is only a few bucks more than the um, UV5R, which you could probably get for about $30 or so. This came out to about $45, $50. You can get these now. And it's way better of a radio. Um, so going into the 1701, um, this one is, of course, both analog and digital. So I'm going to put the battery pack on. The battery pack goes on really nice. Um, it's a smooth finish. It's not like 
um, the UV82, which is almost exactly like um, you getting any um, Motorola radio. So it goes in and it double it has a double metal clamp inside. This one, if it, it clicks in, so it's flush. It's a very good radio. I mean, it's really really good. I like how strong it is and how it feels like it's not going to just break with one fall and then you have $100 down the drain or so. So I turn it on, power it on. I like I really do like how the end of the um, user interface looks. Um, it has a real good, I'm not 100% sure. I believe you can change the colors of the keypad. Um, I'm not 100% sure with that right now. Um, I'm gonna go through the functionality on another video. This is just really the unboxing and the first impression. Um, this is the UI, so that's the volume knob. Um, when you turn it up and down, it gives you a, uh, a readout on the screen so this is really a good radio um, with the readings on the, the screen itself um, this is also has the channel and you can use this also to select different groups so you can change it it will go to different frequencies and such things like that um, I would put on all the extra little gadgets but I gotta get my screwdriver for that to put the the belt clip on which I'll go get in a second I'll put that on I guess I can put in I can also I want to also do a video now it's not supported by chirp as of yet and I don't think it will ever be able to be supported by chirp in its native essence because um, chirp is more towards analog radios um, I don't think it's going to be able to um, be programmed with that because they don't have it where it's DMR capable. Um, there is a way to get the software for this without having this um, disc. Um, you just have to learn how, you just have to know how to um, extract it um, from a page that has it, a good reputable page. <laughs> um, I'm going to show that in a later video. Um, this is just getting it open, opened out. This is how it looks. I'm going to, I guess I could put on some of this stuff. And let's find out where you put this. Uh, it doesn't look like you can see where that goes. I'm also going to do a contact. Um, what's good about DMR radios, DMR radios started in Europe. Um, their their system and their way of they using their radios out there they don't really like the analog way so I, if I'm right about in 2005 if I'm correct um, they started using these radios so that they can I guess group different kind of people that's working in the same area so if you had security and other um, people working, maintenance um, in a building, instead of just having analog radios where you're going to probably have a different PL tone for different um, departments that are using the same radios, um, this groups it. So you can talk to a whole group. It's, it's like using analog where you're doing a different PL tone but it makes it a lot more um, accessible to more people. And you can literally talk to one radio if you want. Um, you cannot do that when it comes to using PL tones. So, um, and over a network, you can have all these radios and it's clear. Um, this sends a digital signal and an analog signal. And what it does is you can send that over IP, internet service provider, and it will broadcast that out um, as far as you want. And um, that's what makes this one so, uh, makes digital radio a lot better because it's almost as if you're using the internet to use the radio. Um, even the repeaters are set up for DMR. Um, it would send out that signal, and at the same time, it's with um, analog and digital coding. It's going to go into that repeater 
it's going to send it over a different way and then now you have you can go further with that radio signal because now it's going to be digitally um, sent through the internet um, you know and then it could come out somewhere else and then go over the air and then it's coming back to your to, to your unit and you can really get real clear um, all over the world um, and that's one thing about digital radio services um, it's it, it gives you more um, it's more flexible in general so you know analog radio it's over the air it goes to a repeater it takes that signal and then sends it back out and um, digital radios takes that same signal and it a little bit different um, coding it's digital and it sends that um, that signal to the repeater and it could go over the internet and as it's going over the internet it's keeping its same um, it doesn't lose any bandwidth it doesn't lose any um, um, carrier so as you're going at the further away you are doesn't really make a difference for DMR radio you could be on another side of the planet and still get the same good crisp sound out of the radio as if you're only a few blocks away um, this is uh, if I'm correct this is uh, five uh, rated at five watts um, let's see if I can find the wattage on this one sometimes they actually show it on the battery um, on the back of this thing let's see yeah it's five watt so this is rated at five watts um, I know they do have another one that's a little bit more it really looks good so what I'm going to do in a later video I'm going to take um, some more time showing how you um, program this kind of radio now I didn't do a program video for analog yet um, I did mention it in an uh, earlier video I can do both I'll show how you set up a repeater and set up a radio just like this one which is really easy you can do all of your little tricks and stuff using um, chirp programming um, and it's easy you know once you understand what you're doing it's step by step by step you gotta you learn what a PL tone is um, what is uh, CT CSS how does that work um, how to put in your um, your positive and negative um, um, up and down when it comes to the repeater um, the duplex the duplex has a, a offsets so you could learn how to do that that's typically easy um, most of the time on chirp it already knows what um, the duplex shift is so sometimes you're just putting in the frequency and it automatically puts in your um, your offset which some people get confused because they don't understand what offset is how to put in the right offset for the repeater and you have to have that in order to be able to talk to the repeater and open up its squelch, um, open up its um, squelch so that it um, take your information and send it out. If you get it off by just one megahertz, um, it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to connect to that that repeater. So um, I can go over that. Uh, I can show step by step. How you program a repeater into it I can show you what the repeaters and stuff are on my radio already in my local area and I can also show you how to do the digital now digital is a lot more complicated and I'm not gonna lie it's a lot more complicated than doing analog but once you understand it after you do it a few times and play around with it there's a whole bunch of videos out there on DMR radios for the past several years now people are getting more into DMR radios so um, it, it's a lot of videos out there. I will do a video on it and show you how I how you do it, and then I will um you know show you a video of my first contact on the DMR. Um, DMR can get you a lot further than um, a, a eight watt radio over a regular repeater. Um, let's say I want to talk to somebody in Europe, and I can go online. I can see who's what frequencies are um, active. 
and I can jump into the, a conversation and I'll be able to hear it because all you have to do is set up your Wi-Fi information into the radio and um, you can you can talk to everybody. <laughs> you can go anywhere in the world if, as long as it's your language that you can speak. Um, you can talk to anybody over the world. So it um, this is just a quick unboxing. Um, right now, I'm slowly getting into different radios. This is my first DMR radio, so I have an analog and an analog and there's a mix analog and um, um, digital radio. And the reason, one of the main reasons why I got it from Balfang. Now, there's a whole bunch of different other radios out there that are both um, analog and digital. But the reason why I went for this one is because it's a, it's a whole lot cheaper than a lot of the other DMR radios. Um, once you go into DMR, you rate it at a, at least $100 plus, and some of the other radios are already around the $200 mark. So, um, Balfang is really doing good. I watched a whole bunch of videos prior to making my decision on it, and um, so far, I haven't seen anybody say that there's anything wrong with it. They say that it's really solid radio, even in the Europe areas. They use it a lot out in Europe. This is very, very, very popular in Europe, more than the U.S. and in North America, um, Canada, um, the U.S., um, and even down south in Mexico. They use this in Europe a lot. And if I'm correct, even in Japan. Um, it's, this is really, really popular out in those countries. Even though it's a Chinese radio, it's very popular. Um, DMR is very popular. It started out in Europe, so it's very popular in Europe. Uh, Germany and uh, France, they use this a lot out there in Great Britain as well. So um, I can show how to do a few of those programmings. I'll do a two programming videos and then I will um, show um, a contact video when I make my first contact um, using the DMR service and not analog. This show you how clear it is um, and how far away it is. Um, I'm going to show you how to find um, there's um, apps out there that you can use that will show you active, currently active um, um, DMR um, frequencies, um, chat rooms or groups, how they call it on DMR is groups, and um, show you how to save groups and all types of things. This radio has a lot of functionality in it. It's a bigger radio than the um, UV82 radio. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than that one. It actually, it's a lot bigger. I say about five percent bigger than um, the UV eighty two radio. Um, but it's a lot of functionality in this radio, and I will definitely get into showing you how DMR works. What's the real big difference between analog and digital radio services? Okay, and if you have any um, questions. Um, if you want to know if this is a good radio to go to after getting your first analog contact and you feel more comfortable talking on regular analog radio and you want to try to find out what is DMR all about and what radio to get, this is a good radio to start out with. It's not too expensive. It's a lot cheaper than uh, other um, models, Kenwood and um, even Motorola radios. Um, it, are very expensive for the same functionality and uh, they might be a little bit better on um, quality but not by so much that it's not practical to buy something like this for your first DMR radio and I've heard people online saying that they use these ra this same radio for a few years now and they, they, they stay with it you know it's a real good radio they do uh, firmware updates on a regular they say like every month or so which is very good for a company to keep up the firmware on these kind of radios because these kind of radios need it. Um, there's you know programming differences and stuff like that that are always needed for a digital radio. Analog not so much but they still need some updating now and then. Um, but this is a good radio. So if anybody has any um, questions please uh, feel free to ask. Um, once again hit the like button for more videos and subscribe to get more videos and notifications. Thank you and have a nice day.